via telephone, Senate President Craig Blair. Good morning, sir. How are you? Very good. Hey, I'm a little disappointed today. You didn't have any interim uh, going on there to where trying to fire me up before I ever even got going. <laughs> well, those, those are at the top of the hour. When you're a bottom yeah. of the hour guest, you don't get them. You're, you're slacking now, I know, to come on at 935. If you want safety, you come on at the half hour break. If you want controversy, top of the hour. I <laughs> Hey, I got a question hey, for you. Hey, except for you, Craig, an exception. There's all, <laughs> we'll, we'll always be ready for you. Make an exception. Yeah. Hey, uh, I, I'm I'm reminded of that uh, Peanuts uh, character Lucy and oh, dog germs, dog germs. Oh. <laughs> what what happened with baby dog and your food, Craig? Was my what? Baby dog and your food. What happened? That wasn't my food. That wasn't your food. <laughs> we heard that baby that dog licked your plate. So the newspaper there said. There was no food on that plate. I don't know what baby dog seen there, but uh, <laughs> the, 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 nobody had even been sitting there eating. Uh, but I thought it was hilarious, and there was a cookie jar there with dog treats in it, and I opened it up and gave baby dog oh. a, a dog treat. Uh, so. Okay, well, that settles that controversy. Uh, yeah. I, I thought baby dog was wolfing down your steak or something. <laughs> there wasn't no steak, but it, it was a good meal. A good crowd for that matter. So I can see where this segment's going to be going. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were going to Capen, but nope, yeah. it's going to be somewhere else. Be, be, before we leave that subject, yeah. how many uh, Lincoln dinners will you, will you be attending this year, Craig? Oh, my golly. Uh, it, it all depends. Uh, but normally it's 15, 20 of them throughout a year. Uh, that I do, whether it's a Lincoln dinner, Reagan dinner, Eisenhower dinner, there's a bunch of them that I go to. If Let's Berkeley start. County's going one, I think, on uh, April the 30th, but I'm going to be on a trade mission in, Ohio, in Taiwan, so I won't be able to make that one. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, so uh, with all the controversy over U.S. delegates uh, or representative visits in Taiwan now, you're still having a trade ministry, uh, mission there. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, the uh, Taiwan currently has uh, investments in the state of West Virginia. And all you have to do is go back and look of, and, of when Mao Zedong and the revolution took place in China. And those that were the, the movers and the shakers, those that believed in democracy, left the mainland and went to Taiwan and then invested there and grew that island to be what it is today. Uh, and it's rather tremendous. And if something goes south over there uh, on that, I assure you the same thing's going to happen again. And I would love to see them come and invest in uh, West Virginia and the United States. They're great people. I've been there before in 2018. And uh, so we're opening the, the grand opening for our trade offices over there. And, yes, I was instrumental in getting that uh, put in place. And, I, and I'm a big fan of being able to – and if there's no investment, by the way, I'll close that trade office, but I can almost assure you that there's going to be significant investment in the state of West Virginia. Are and we, we do exports to Taiwan. Are we going to be making semiconductors in West Virginia, Craig? I'm not saying that. Uh, in fact, beggars can't be choosy when it comes to that. Uh, the investment can hit the whole gauntlet of whether it's in plastics, of utilizing our natural gas, of the fertilizers. Of the, the, the list just goes on and on. And we're natural resource state. Uh, and so it makes it so that we're ripe of, for that investment. And uh, we, everywhere I go. No matter where it is in this country uh, right now, people come up and say, how'd you do this in West Virginia? How are you getting this done? How are you getting that done? And corporate America is paying attention to the state of West Virginia. It is an amazing time. Craig, let's talk about capital punishment. That's a uh, big article in the journal today about your words in Moundsville in regards to drug dealers, fentanyl pushers, and such. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, let's get something clear here. Uh, this is, uh, and when I s started speaking of that, uh, I made certain that people understood that this is Craig Blair speaking. I am not speaking on behalf of the West Virginia uh, Senate or the Republican Caucus. I haven't had time enough to take it out for a test drive with them. Uh, and 
I believe that the vast majority of the caucus would be supportive of this plan, and we're putting something together right now. Uh, but look, uh, fentanyl in particular is devastating our children. It's devastating our schools, exhausting our teachers, overwhelming our foster care system. It's stressing out emergency services, our hospital, our law enforcement. It's destroying our families and our communities. Okay? And something's got to give. And so I took it for a test drive out there. It was well received in, in Moundsville with about 150 people there where I actually said that I wanted to see capital punishment for those that manufacture illicit fentanyl and those that are distributing it on, quote, the wholesale level, for lack of a better term. Uh, there was a big bust in Charleston here years ago, so they would have, or not years ago, months ago. And to, to, you got to get to the core root of the problem. And let's roll back to China for a minute. Make no mistake about it, the vast majority of the illicit fentanyl is coming from China. And you hear them talking about the Mexican border, but it's not just that. It's up the West Coast, all the way into Canada, and making it through that way, too. And anybody that studied history at all understands the Opium Wars, and I call this Opium Wars version 2.0 of on this. Actually, you could actually say version 3.0, but of We've got to get ready and say enough is enough and make it clear that this is not going to be acceptable in the state of West Virginia and that, you know, if you're a drug user, uh, I recommend to you get help, get clean, or get out. Uh, there's going to be other things that's done. Look, I was in Mingo County last Monday, and while I was there, Within a 24-hour period, there were three overdoses, one death out of those overdoses, and a stabbing. And their main concern down there was is that, that we're being devastated. We're being devastated by this. And fentanyl is in everything. Okay, to, to my understanding is uh, the state police of uh, labs up there that test marijuana say that it's 70 to 80 percent of all the marijuana they test is laced with fentanyl. The vape pens are getting fentanyl in it. It's killing our people. So you got to do something bold. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and this, this is a bold statement. I recognize that. Uh, but it, it's something that needs to be done. And to be quite honest with you, I think it ought to be a federal crime. But uh, we can start it here in the state of West Virginia, or at least I'm attempting to, and then put the resources in place to make it so that you can help uh, these people and take the demand off of our foster care system, our to emergency service workers. I mean, think about it. They're out here to delivering Narcan for these overdoses while somebody's in an automobile accident or having a heart attack, they may not be able to get the service that they need because they're reviving somebody for the fourth or the fifth time. That because, that's a problem. It stresses out our services, and in the state of West Virginia, a lot of them are volunteers. And so you wonder why we're getting less and less people that are wanting to come into those roles. Craig, this is John Gilstrap. To be clear, are you, are you suggesting the death penalty for the act of distribution or the act of distribution that results in a fatality? Well, it's... A, it's a, it's a, the manufacturing of it to start with, and then the transport of it, and let's just say that's an ounce of it. An ounce of fentanyl would be enough dosage to kill every person in the city of Martinsburg, probably in the city or Berkeley County. Okay? That's huge. So I'm looking at it on the higher level. You know, the, the, the person that is selling what's supposed to be uh, heroin or whatever uh, on the individual level there, that uh, is, is small potatoes. If you can actually get it before it makes it to that person and those people, and you make it so, and they're the ones that's really making the money, that's where it's lucrative at. You get those people. 
and uh, I'll throw another one in with it. Uh, too, the, you know, how everybody's fighting over on how to do capital punishment, which drugs to use for that and all. Hell, I'd tell them, use the poison. You still there, Craig? We lost Senate President Craig Blair. Hey, um, Colin, let's move up our 957 break and take it now, and then we'll try to get Craig back uh, via telephone once we uh, reestablish the contact. So uh, we'll go right to commercial break right now and more with Senate President Craig Blair, hopefully after we take this TV 10 two-minute timeout. If you're in an accident, the first thing that you have to do is call 911. You have to get medical care immediately. The next thing you need to do is call us. When you hire us at the Skinner Law Firm, what we do is we are gonna investigate your case, and we're gonna lay out the options that you have, all at no cost to you. We will use all of our resources and all of our experience to get you what you deserve. The Skinner Law Firm, skinnerfirm.com. Hi, I'm Annette McDonald, and I am the designer at Orsini's in Martinsburg, West Virginia. We welcome you into our store to show you a complete line of what we do here. We design your cabinetry, quartz countertops, granite countertops, hardware, anything for the full remodel of your kitchen and your home needs. We also do bathrooms, and we have flooring available, too. We make sure that your project with Orsini's is the best in the market. Welcome to Orsini's. Orsini's.com. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. At the Berkeley County Health Department, our motto is prevent, promote, protect. Since 1935, our mission has been to provide clinical and environmental services to protect the health of the general public. We're committed to building public health in our community by offering a wide range of services, including blood pressure screening, breast and cervical screening, family planning, counseling, lab testing, and more. We perform health inspections to make sure the restaurants you visit are clean, and we prepare and coordinate plans to respond to all hazards. The Berkeley County Health Department, 122 Waverly Court, Martinsburg. We have reestablished our link with Senate President Craig Blair, segment brought to you by the Skinner Law Firm. Uh, Craig, you were toward the end of talking about fentanyl and how to deal with those who sell and manufacture that product. Well, to, 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 let me just say that, look, I'm looking at the supply chain and look at the, it's the manufacturing and those that actually warehouse and wholesale. Uh, I'm not talking about retailers, okay? Uh, because retailers is on the smaller level on doing that. Now, this is proposed legislation. I'm open to any good ideas that's out here to be able to solve this problem. We're bringing the jobs to the state of West Virginia, and we're doing the things that we need to to give people upward mobility. Our people deserve that, uh, but we cannot – continue to have a stress on the system, especially our DHHR and our EMS and our law enforcement and our hospitals, that, that's that got to come to an end. Uh, and so th this is the reason I know it's a bold statement. I recognize that. Uh, but it's also saying that the time has come of and doing nothing or doing what we've been doing of reviving people with narcan and then setting them on their way is not a good approach it's failing us and this seems to be growing and growing so we need to bring an end to this let's take you to great cape and park then and move on to what we were discussing a little bit on friday i think it was might have been thursday friday in regards to the potential of 350 uh, permitted campers in, in the park, I suppose, up by the upper lake? RVs, RVs, look. Yeah. Yeah, by campers, I meant the vehicle, sure. not the actual yeah. person. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, Craig, you texted me and said that's not going to happen. 
Yeah, that's not going to happen. What they've got is proposals out there of of all different types that, that they put an RFP out. And and look, that's good government when you examine all possibilities on what you've got, what resources, how to make it better. Uh, but I'll be the first one to tell you that I know full well uh, that there's not going to be 350 campsites in there because it would actually be so overwhelming to the park uh, that you would lose the ability to have the charm of the park. Uh, that, that that's not going to happen. Uh, now, the, the real possibility, there could be zero where they say, nope, this doesn't make sense, this isn't going to work. But what we're doing, and I say we, it's really not me, uh, but uh, Department of Commerce and the DNR are over there looking at how to make our systems better, how to get, to get more people there. And that park is one of the gemstones in the state of West Virginia when it, when it comes to parks, and it's always overbooked. And, and so maybe there is the capability of putting 50 campsites in for the RV hookups, uh, something like that. I don't know what the number is myself. I just that's an arbitrary number that I just threw out there. But it's got to make sense. And then there's other things that come along with it, too. So some of the proposals talked about coming in and redoing the beach there at the lake. Of And so th there's a partnership that can come in and be able to help things out. This is not uh, something that is new to West Virginia, but it's making it so that we can get our park systems up. Imagine uh, where you get a private contractor in, where that you could do horseback riding in a park and things like that. Mm -hmm. Those are real opportunities. So you explore these things to actually to improve the amenities that you want for the park. But I'm telling you right now, I'd be personally opposed to 350, and I do carry a little bit of weight. <laughs> uh, on that, uh, same way for Charles Trump and, and our delegates that are, that are there. Uh, but I, I am not concerned by any of this. They're just going through the process uh, of p putting everything out and letting people think uh, fr fr freely of on, on what we could do with it, how we can improve that park system. And I'm quite confident when it's over and done with, everybody's going to be happy. Well, I say everybody. Most people will be happy of uh, on that. Can't make everybody happy at any time, at least not in my world. Mm -hmm. Craig, have you had the opportunity to talk to the county commissioners uh, in Morgan County? No, but I've seen their letter that come across. To, uh, who I talked to is James Bailey, uh, who's the secretary of commerce he and by the way he was my attorney when he was first hired in the legislature of uh, when we took over and i was the gov org chairman james uh was my chief counsel and uh, so we've got a great relationship and i i've questioned him about many of this and it's most of it ends up no 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 that's not happening that's misinformation and all that and so that's why i texted in the way i did the other day to you because i'm confident confident that the 350 thing is not even on the table i seriously doubt if a hundred is on the table but but not the work is not completed yet and the public hearings aren't completed yet there's a lot of steps to go through yet and they still could very well say no nope, this does not fit in with the dna of that park and they're want, they're wanting to make it so that the people in morgan county and the people of west virginia can be very very proud of their park craig is there essentially been a, a pile of money that's assigned to the improvement of kakapon and now we're trying to figure out how best to do it is that there's no no, no uh, not act, that's not an accurate statement at all there there are more resources that we're moving into our parks to improve them but cape and uh, got a huge improvement um uh, that had a lot to do with charlie trump of uh, when we issued bonds out i guess that was four years ago five years ago i lose track of time and uh, charlie pressed hard on that and so the lodges have been uh doubled in capacity there's been a tremendous amount of improvements that took place uh, at that park and it's my understanding that that's our one park that actually operates in the black or close to it 
Uh, most of our parks operate in the red, and they're a burden on the taxpayer, but they're also an amenity for our taxpayers as well. But yeah, many, many, many people come from out of state to come in and, and spend money and want to enjoy our park systems. So, but th- th- I don't know of, th- th- there could be some state dollars involved in it, but there's not an, uh, where we've made a concerted effort to put a bunch of money into just Capen, other than the bonding that we've done. Craig, uh, as Lieutenant Governor, uh, oh, excuse me, as President of the Senate, you're also Lieutenant Governor. Over the years, uh, I've heard your name associated with that of Governor. Are you, do you have any thoughts at all about throwing your name in for the very crowded list of candidates running for governor? Uh, not particularly. Uh, for the, look, I wouldn't mind being governor, but you know what? I, I don't. I'm not bothered by the title. I'm not bothered by the title of Senate President or Lieutenant Governor. I like the work. I like fixing things. I like making people's lives better in the state of West Virginia. I've spent my life fixing fixing stuff. And yes, it took a while for me to learn how to do this job, but I've gotten very good at it. And I I joke about it that what I do is I put our best and brightest in the rooms to get together. That way we're not cross-talking each other and the he said, she said stuff. And you get everybody in there and you get resolution and a plan of action to make things work. That's what the governor's role is doing. But I can do that as a senator. I can do that as the Senate president, lieutenant governor, uh, and I exploit that. I, I get beat up on by a few because I work every day of the week. I'm sitting at the Capitol right now. I drive down on Sundays of anywhere from 10 o'clock to noon. Uh, and it's a five-hour trip, and then I drive back to Martinsburg on Friday afternoons, and most of the time I'm talking on the phone both directions. Craig, uh, I got to jump on, in because we're just about out of time. So I want to uh, I want to thank you for yours and uh, have a lovely day, sir. You're very welcome. I'm anxious to hear what, what your listeners has got to say about the the fentanyl of uh, yeah. capital punishment. Check, check the so. Facebook comment page. Thanks. I bet. Okay. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Thanks, Craig.